The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Once, when Jesus was praying in solitude, the disciples were with him. He asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. Then he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said in reply, the Christ of God. He rebuked them and directed them not to tell this to anyone. He said, the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. The Gospel of the Lord. So we have Luke's account of the very Gospel that we had Sunday from Mark. So we have Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I know many of you know this, so a quick review on the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are synoptic gospels and they tell many of the same stories just from the different perspective of the different evangelists. And so we had this very account from Mark on, on, uh, on Sunday. Who do people say that I am? And who do you say that I am? And that is a question I think that we're all gonna stand before before Christ an answer. And it'd be good to have the right answer, okay, as we continue on our journey here. But I'm gonna focus for just a moment on the very first line of the gospel today. And it was it is this a reminder. Once when Jesus was praying in solitude, and the disciples were with him. And I've asked this very question before about this gospel or this kind of uh, line. So was he alone or were the disciples with him? Once when Jesus was praying in solitude and the disciples were with him. And I highlighted the last time I spoke about this, the fact that Jesus has kind of a permanent solitude. Jesus is always alone in this world. Jesus is never completely understood by anybody. And this sort of aloneness that Jesus carries around with him, it shouldn't be like a tragic loneliness. And it's not a tragic loneliness because we will read in the Gospel of John chapter 8 verse 29, he who sent me is with me, and he has not left me alone. So Jesus is always accompanied by the Father. But among people, he's always, in a sense, alone. And there is, a, there is I think, a tremendous lesson in Jesus' solitude for us. Now, certainly, we are here this morning to experience a kind of communion, a community. In fact, you think about the idea of receiving Holy Communion and that we are united to one another in and through Christ. And it is a beautiful union and we shouldn't feel alone. But at the same time, we are, even if our spouse is right next to us. There is still this kind of reality of individualism that we carry with us. That is exactly the experience that Jesus had. Once when Jesus was praying in solitude, he was alone, but his disciples were with him. That's our journey. That's our experience. That's the experience of single people. That's the experience of married people. That's the experience of 
of only children and children that have 10 siblings. There is the reality that we stand before God alone. But it should not be a sentence of loneliness. And we have to learn to hold these realities in tension that, you know, we journey through this life. Even the, the ancient Greek philosophers spoke about this going through life, longing for somebody to complete us. But you know who completes us? You know why celibacy isn't a tragedy of loneliness? Because who completes us? Only communion with God truly completes us. And so we are here today for communion, aren't we? For community, to be together with others. I sometimes say, when I'm preparing a couple for marriage, that the communion that they have receiving the Holy Eucharist next to each other at Mass is the closest bond of communion they'll ever have. And I hope you all understand what I'm saying. When Jesus was praying in solitude and the disciples were with him, he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. So we are here in solitude, even though we're here in communion. And I pray that we all know that communion with Christ. This is your invitation to give yourself a beautiful gift. Are you interested in Catholicism, learning more about the Catholic faith? We have a process here at Our Lady of the Gulf to teach, to grow in faith, and we want you to join. 